In this class we're going to talk about some issues involved in recruitment. So recruitment occurs when a job vacancy arises. So companies go looking for workers when there is a need for the workers, when there is an obvious vacancy and an obvious job to be completed, an obvious task to be completed. An organisation will then have to fill this vacancy by adopting a range of recruitment methods and procedures. And that's what we want to talk about in the course of the next few slides. The aim of the recruitment process is to identify appropriate candidates suitable for the job being advertised and who will help the business achieve its objectives. So it's a question of finding the right person to work for the organisation, the person having the appropriate skills and aptitudes to make a contribution towards the fulfilment of the organisation's objectives. Now determining uh, a vacancy, well this can be caused by a new product development or by growth within the organisation, the company simply gets bigger and that could be caused by increased sales. So generally speaking business expansion is a cause for uh, increased numbers of vacancies and an increased requirement for workers. It could be of course a new business, a uh, completely new business coming into existence uh, which will need a, a complete workforce. But for existing businesses, it, generally speaking, it's caused by growth. It could also be caused by some employees leaving, and they may leave for a variety of reasons, as I indicate here. Um, it could be people leaving for a change of career, or because of sickness, or retirement, or maternity they wish to, to leave, perhaps to have a family and to look after their family. Or they may, may leave because there are better job prospects offered by a competitor. So a whole variety of reasons why people may leave an organisation, but once they've left there is a gap in employment within the organisation which will create the, the vacancy. The need for recruitment can be overcome by the following factors. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the organisation will go looking for a worker when perhaps someone leaves or, or the business expands. It could be that it could be a, a new work structure is developed. Uh, perhaps the, the workforce, the existing workforce could be deployed more efficiently or perhaps more efficient capital could be brought in to work in cooperation with the workforce. Uh, more specialist machinery and more dedicated machinery to completing certain tasks, better designed around the requirements of the, the business. That would obviate or reduce the need to have a vacancy or to fill a vacancy. It could be that the existing workforce are asked to uh, do some overtime working. Perhaps they're working on 37 hours a week or 40 hours a week and uh, some incentive is given to the existing workforce to work an extra 5 hours a week or 10 hours a week or whatever it is and in return they may be paid additional sums, perhaps time and a half. So if you work out the, the, tar uh, the hourly rate over the, the week and offer them 50% extra perhaps they may be willing to work overtime. Well that may reduce or eliminate the requirement for an extra worker because recruiting an extra worker is expensive, training the extra worker and integrating them into the, the workforce and into the, the culture of the business and the practices of the business so getting the existing workforce to work longer hours in return for uh, some remuneration 
that may be a solution. Maybe that uh, part-time work could be established for for some workers. Um, sometimes, depending on the nature of the work, depending on the location of the business, um, part-time work may be created, and existing workers, family members, may join the company on a part-time basis to augment their family incomes. It may also be possible to spread the working hours. Um, so, for example, introducing Saturday working and asking the, the workforce to attend on Saturdays in return perhaps double their hourly rate, their hourly weekday rate. Um, some workers may be willing to attend uh, work on Saturday and in this way it spreads the work hour, the working hours and again may reduce the requirement for an extra worker. In the recruitment process step one is to, to look carefully at the requirements of the job. Um, what is the job requirement or what are the job requirements? Um, what are the duties to perform? What, what's required in this particular job? The one that uh, is trying to be filled. So the management will look at the the job, look at the requirements of the job and um, specify the duties. And then look at any special qualifications that may be required to complete the tasks that have been identified. Uh, it may be the person needs to have good school qualifications or a good specialist qualification perhaps in engineering or in accountancy or whatever. So it's important to, to try and form a link and, and see the, the linkage between qualifications and the requirements of the job. Uh, also, it's important to work out precisely how many workers are required. Uh, to save doing the exercise over and over, one at a time, uh, look at the number of vacancies, look at the total job requirement and estimate the number of workers required and, and do it in one process. It's cheaper to place the advertisements in, uh, in the press, in specialist magazines, to advertise it generally if it's for a number it's spread over so instead of saying the company wants one it wants perhaps five uh, five workers to, to do a particular set of tasks so set out the, the job uh, description and the person specification what sort of person they want and try and link the two so that there is uh, a thorough understanding of what is required, what's the job, and what sort of person is required. And step two is to attract attention from the employee. So advertise the job vacancy. Make, it, make the employee aware that there is a vacancy. And it could be that it's online uh, recruitment, or it could be it's through the more traditional um, methods, for example going to advertise with job agencies and going to um, traditional press outlets and or specialist magazines. So it could be online or it could be through the, the more traditional uh, outlets. So job centres may be contacted and the precise nature of the job, the job description indicated to them and they may do some of the filtering at the start to see which uh, worker best meets the, the job description and pass them on. So some of the filtering will be done at that, at that point. Some jobs are indicated by word of mouth. Uh, workers in the business uh, know there's a job vacancy coming up and they have a friend or they know someone and 
there could be personal recommendation of this type. And that also can be quite efficient and can be quite useful. Uh, personal recommendation sometimes means that the worker recruited is more reliable and will try hard not to let their friend down um, so they will dedicate their energies to the requirements of the job. Agencies. Well there are lots of specialist agencies and indeed there are lots of general agencies as well. I've just mentioned job centres earlier but there are private agencies uh, which uh, recruit personnel for a fee. Generally speaking the agencies are looking at very specialist jobs and very specialist occupations uh, for example accountancy or computing or um, some of the more professional type of jobs. But um, again it's, it's a source for recruitment so it's, it's worth noting. Now identify the right candidate for the job. Well shortlist of candidates uh, that hold the relevant experience and qualifications so make a shortlist and arrange uh, interviews with the appropriate candidates. So make a shortlist and select some for, for interview. Uh, undertake the interviews and hopefully select the right candidate. So undertake the interviews and try to make it as objective as possible try to get a good interview panel together um, people who will be working specifically with that job and with that candidate when the candidate has been recruited but also HR the human resource people uh, someone from general management and even an outside person uh, would be useful perhaps someone from an agency or uh, someone from the quite senior within the the industry itself. So it depends on the type of job of course and the seniority of the, the job, how senior the job is and the position advertised. The three steps together help organizations in the recruitment of, um, of selecting the right uh, candidates. So the three steps help to select the right candidates for to fill the position. It's an ongoing process. New employees are required constantly. Uh, it's generally speaking there, there's a turnover of labour in most companies. People leave for various reasons throughout the year and new people will be recruited. Um, it's the process of life. People want to retire or people want to move house or uh, people find uh, new careers or they want new experiences. So they leave for a variety of reasons and um, the companies are in positions where they're almost forced to engage in the recruitment process. So essentially it's, it's a question of finding the right candidate and advertising for the right candidate um, making a short list of the, the people who respond and interviewing them to, to see if they are appropriate. So quite a straightforward um, little exercise this class so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.